Confession of Faith, Chapter 7, of God's Covenant with Man, Section 3. Man, by his fall, having made himself incapable of life by that covenant, the Lord was pleased to make a second, commonly called the covenant of grace, wherein he freely offereth unto sinners life and salvation by Jesus Christ, requiring of them faith in him that they may be saved, and promising to give unto all those that are ordained unto life his Holy Spirit, to make them willing and able to believe. Question 1. Did man, by his fall, make himself incapable of life by the covenant of works? Answer, yes. Man, by his fall, lost communion with God. Genesis 3, verses 8, 10, and 24. Genesis 3, verses 8, 10, and 24. Verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. In verse 24. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way, to keep the way of the tree of life. And came under his wrath and curse. Ephesians 2 verse 2 and Galatians 3 verse 10. Ephesians 2 verse 2. Wherein in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Galatians 3 verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Thus did man make himself incapable of attaining that life promised in the covenant of works, becoming wholly unfit for that work. Romans 3, verse 20. Romans 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Question 2. Was the Lord pleased to make a second covenant, commonly called the covenant of grace, with fallen man? Answer, yes. Galatians 3, verse 21. Romans 8, verse 3. Romans 3, verses 20 and 21. Genesis 3, verse 15. And Isaiah 42, verse 6. Galatians 3, verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Romans 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Romans 3, verses 20 and 21. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall, be, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Genesis 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Isaiah 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. Man, being plunged into a fallen estate through Adam's first transgression, God of his mere good pleasure, Eudokia, Ephesians 1, verse 11, Ephesians 1, verse 11, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, was pleased to undertake and make a second covenant with man, which covenant is made sure in Christ. Hebrews 9, verses 15 and 16. Hebrews 9, verses 15 and 16. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of a testator. In this covenant of grace, the Lord freely offers unto sinners life and salvation through Jesus Christ. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Revelation 21, verse 6. And Revelation 22, verse 17. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Ho, every one that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. 
Revelation 21, verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Question 3. Does this covenant of grace require any conditions? Answer. The Arminian view is that Adam having lost the promise and incurred the penalty of the covenant which demanded perfect obedience, Christ's death having made it consistent with the claims of absolute justice, God for Christ's sake introduces a new covenant, styled the covenant of grace, offering to all men individually the eternal life forfeited by Adam on the lowered and graciously possible condition of faith and evangelical obedience. According to this view, the new covenant is just as much a covenant of works as the old one was. The only difference is that the works demanded are far less difficult, and we are graciously aided in our endeavors to accomplish them. According to this view, also, faith and evangelical obedience secure eternal life in the new covenant in the same way that perfect obedience did in the old covenant. The Orthodox distinguish. If the condition be taken antecedently and a priori for the, the meritorious cause and natural condition, the covenant of grace is rightly denied to be conditioned. It is wholly gratuitous, depending solely on the goodwill of God, Eudokia, and not the merits of man. Nor is it founded in any sense upon the actions of man, but by the righteousness of Christ alone. But if taken a posteriori for the instrumental cause, receptive of the promises of the covenant, it cannot be denied that the covenant is conditional. Number one, it is it is proposed, excuse me, with an express condition. John 3, verses 16 and 36, Romans 10, verse 9, Acts 8, verse 37, and Mark 16, verse 16. John 3, verses 16 and 36, verse 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in verse 36, he that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Romans 10, verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Acts 8, verse 37. And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mark 16, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Number 2. Unless it was conditional, there would be no place for the threatenings in the gospel. Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6, and Mark 16, verse 16. Hebrews 6, verses 4 through 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Mark 16, verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned which could not be denounced except against those who neglected the prescribed condition. For the neglect of faith and obedience cannot be culpable, if not required. Number three. Otherwise it would follow that God is bound in this covenant to man and not man to God, there being no reciprocal obligation implied. Question four. What is the condition of the covenant of grace? Answer. The condition of the covenant of grace is faith. John 3, verse 16 and Romans 1, verses 16 and 17, as well as Romans 10, verse 9. John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 1, verses 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. 
Romans 10, verse 9, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Faith, taken instrumentally, can consist only with the grace of God, for which nothing but a reception is required, which is the proper action of faith. Romans 5, verse 17, and John 1, verse 12. Romans 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. John 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of men, even to them that believe on his name. Hence Paul points out the receptive nature of this faith. Ephesians 2, verse 8. Ephesians 2, verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And excludes boasting. Romans 3, verse 27. Romans 3, verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Question 5. Is this condition of the covenant of grace dependent upon the will of man? Answer, no. God hath promised to give unto those whom he hath, has chosen by his Holy Spirit that gift of faith whereby they are made willing to believe and embrace the offers of grace in the gospel. Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27, John 6, verses 44 and 45, and Philippians 2, verse 13. Ezekiel 36, verses 26 and 27. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments, and do them. John 6, verses 44 and 45. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Philippians 2, verse 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. 